this conversation, yeah, sometimes you go in with like a pre-assumed idea of what someone's going to say or how they're going to act, and then the reality plays out completely differently. And that was what happened here in this conversation with Martin Ball. Um, yeah, so I'm here to talk to you tonight. I think the title was 5-MeO-DMT and Non-Dual Energetic Therapy. I never really plan things out, I just like to talk. And I tell people, I click, I purr, I growl, I tone, I whistle, I do this kind of weird, you know, it's kind of like this speaking kind of thing that's just all coming out. It's all I'm doing is I'm using my body to express the energy as it is. So there's no, there's no birds or bears or insects or aliens here, it's just the energy sounds this way and I'm helping release it and move it. So this, I mean, it gets really, really weird. So a person's lying down and I'm on top of them and I'm growling and purring and then usually I'm making kind of you know these weird faces I started purging more for people and it used to be that I'd like purge a little bit but now it was like buckets and buckets of purging. Almost every single session I lose whatever's in my stomach I lose all of it in the session and the client is like oh yes thank you oh yes which is great. I'm sometimes not most of the time most of the time the way that works is the person is lying down they're kind of like spread eagled like this and um, I usually make it into the bucket. So leave a hand on a person, get the bucket, put the bucket down. Sometimes it just happens where I throw up on the person because that's what they need. Because that's what they need. need. I had this guy, he's like looking at me, he's like, can I lick your heart? <laughs> it's like, okay. So he kind of leans in trying to lick my heart, he's like, no, no, I need you to lick my heart. And then he, he fell down. And see, in this instance, this actually was genuine. He did need someone to lick his heart. So he's lying down, and I've got my tongue on his heart. And then I can feel it coming, and then it, right on his chest. The guy looked at it, and he's like, oh, it's a work of art. And then he like smeared it all over himself. <laughs> They're one of the weird ones. This is way back in the beginning. Woman comes over, and I don't know where we were, round two, round three, I'm not quite sure where we were in our rounds of the medicine. But she's on the mat. I'm on top of her, and my tongue is on her forehead, and I'm growling. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I can feel it. It's coming, it's coming. And I just <laughs> and I threw up all over her head. <laughs> yeah, see, this is the kind of shit where the ego's back in there, my ego's like, dude, you can't do that. <laughs> you cannot throw up on this woman. That is so rude. It's like, no, I have to, I have to, I have to, I have to, I have to. So I threw up on her head. <laughs> this is what I've learned about throwing up on people. They're usually like, oh yeah, oh. <laughs> You know, so I, I learned like really early on, my job as a facilitator here is simply to follow the energy and to embody it fully without reservation, without second guessing, without judgment. And if it means I need to throw up on someone, throw up on them. Just do it because they're going to appreciate it as odd as it may seem. They will find value in that. Yeah, so what I always tell people going into a session is that, look, 
if I hear your ego indulging, I'm probably going to call you on it. That I might let you do that for a little bit, but if it becomes excessive, that I'm going to call you on it, and it's your job to trust that I'm telling you that. But sometimes egos don't want to hear that, that people are like, no, I, I know, I know, don't tell me that. Um, but other times, it can snap people out. Like I had one guy come over several years ago, an uh, older gentleman, and he went into this whole thing. You know, He took his hand, and he's like, Oh, we Jews have always suffered for God. We've all, why must we suffer so? And man, that just so set me off. I just, I came and I just sat right on his chest and I just looked right in his face and he had his eyes closed. He was like, we always suffer for God. And I just got, I got this close and I said, do not bring that kind of bullshit into my house. And he opened his eyes and he looked at me and he's like, oh. You're right, I'm so full of shit, oh my god. And then, he like, and then he threw up, and then he went into this beautiful state. But sometimes you need to call people on that. The practitioner needs to be willing to put themselves in that situation. That, look, your ego is indulging here, so I'm going to confront you for your benefit. I mean, this is done out of love, but it might get difficult. But sometimes you need to tell people, you're full of shit, and you're doing it right now. I'm going to go ahead and take us up another level. Okay, uh, that's a really good question. Um, I cannot tell you how, especially men too, but mainly women, man, they want to have sex right then and there in the middle of the session. I mean, it's very, very clear what's going on there, and which also is very natural because what else is God doing? I mean, God has a few options. Kill, which is lots of fun. Sex, even more fun, or eat them. Okay, so consume, interacting with the other. I mean, there's only a limited number of choices, and everything else is kind of playing that out. So, especially many women get very, very sexual. Um, so, if I were the kind of person that's like, hey, I want to give people medicine, and let's just mm -hmm. manipulate my way into their loins, I mean, that'd be really, really easy to do. That would not be a problem. Um, I have never had sex with a client. I have never engaged sexually. Sometimes I am touching people on their genitals, because that's what they need. Because that's what they need. 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 Um, but when, so it's got to be honest. It's got to be real. That's the, that's the one thing, it's the only thing I'm concerned about, is, is it real? Mm -hmm. You know, especially with women, I've also found in working different places of their body, where like I might be working on a woman's throat here, and then afterwards, she tells me, like, man, that was all sexual for me. That was all about what was going on down here. And so there's just this interesting connectivity between the whole thing. And then even sometimes I find my thumbs are, like, way down people's throats. Again, it's not something I'm planning on. It's just I'm going at them, and, all, and it's like a magnet. My thumbs are, like, whoa, way down their throats. And then it's like their body is, like, sucking my thumbs in. And it's, like, deeper, 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 deeper. And then all of a sudden, ah! And then, ah, oh, and then through that release, and so this is part of it that's like, I don't know what the hell's going on. So when people really go deep, it's very common for people to stop breathing for short periods of time. So there is the potential that someone might not start to breathe again. Like I'll tell you, there was one time I had this woman who was 79 years old. And out of all the people that I worked with, she seemed the closest to like, oh, whoa, whoa, she's really going. And the way that, because she, she wasn't breathing and she was just lying there. What happened was is I ended up lying down on top of her. <laughs> 
So I put my tongue in her mouth. And I pushed against her tongue, and there was no push back. And I was like, oh, OK, you know, this, is, this is serious. And so then I just waited with my tongue up against the tip of her tongue. And after a while, she suddenly pushed my tongue out of her mouth. And I was like, OK, she's going to be fine. But that, for me, that was the session that I felt was the closest to someone like, where well, she's really just going to go. And I think that there's always that potential. So I overall am very hopeful that you know, given enough time, this, this will be something that's normal and natural. And that's why I've written a futuristic science, uh, science fiction novel <laughs> wherein all of these things are just considered an ordinary part of everyday experience and there's no problem with it. <laughs> ah, I love life. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Great, thank you.